Okie doke. We are on the last of our first 20 in a 60 word test uh, of the Book of Mormon vocabulary. I want a few say a few things, just interject them here. I've had some interesting response to these words. Some enjoy them, some don't, don't, and that's okay. Uh, but people say, oh, well, Joseph could have known that word, could have known that definition. It's possible. I, I really don't know. And the point I've made before I want to make again is this is about a collective body of work. We're on the 20th of 60. When you get to 60, and then I have more after that, up to 70 and 90 and 110, 120. You may not follow me that long, but if you do, then make your decision. Until then, it's a crapshoot. We're just going, well, maybe, maybe not. But when you see all those words that go through this process, you're going to go, hmm, how could Joseph, how could any semi-educated man, you know, again, third or seventh grade, somewhere in there, some very, very difficult words. And just an aside, I've said this before, but I want to just say it one more time here. So my my wife was a retired school teacher, 35 years of teaching. And she told me when we started this project, you know, nobody is given words, spellings, or definitions. You learn in vocabulary, you learn everything. That's part of the process. Now, again, Joseph knew some words and didn't know other words. I don't know which ones he knew. So the game is, could he have known these words? And as they get further and further into the hardness, you're going to go, it becomes more unlikely. And at some point in time, it's very difficult to defend Joseph's ability to, yes, he knew every word that you brought up, every one. Knew how to spell them correctly. Knew the definition and if you've seen a lot of these words before, or some of the words before, you'll know the definition is always the hang. It's easy to know a word. Not too hard even to spell a word. If it's not big and hard, it's possible. Even a hard word, possible. But those definitions are son of a gun. And when they're used only once, and all these in this first 60 words are used once, and then put in one place, precisely with the definition that's in the 1828 dictionary, the American Dictionary of the English Language. Hmm. <laughs> Again, uh, is it absolute? Maybe not, but you get to the 60 or the 100 or the 120th, and I'll bet you go, how could anybody with an under-leveled education do that in 1829 or in 2024? Very, very, very difficult because again, these are so precise. Now, just a reminder on word number in the entire body of our scripture from Genesis to the end of the Pearl of Great Price about 1,250,000 words. Some of my words only used once in that entire 1,250,000 words. Boy. Could Joseph really have known a word that's so selective? Now, I recently put up a, a, a word that was used 27 times in the Bible. And one of my fair anti said, hey, 27 times, Joseph surely would have read that and known what it meant. There are 744,000 words in the Bible. 27 times. The word is per adventure. And again, you can go, oh, yeah, piece of cake. But I asked them, and I asked, now, would you know that definition? Because you read it 27 times throughout the Bible. And it's easy to read. I, I'm guilty of this. I read the Book of Mormon. I read the Bible. There's a word I don't know. I just skip over and keep on going. I kind of have a context. Okay, I'll do my best. Because I don't know all the words. In this case, a if Joseph wrote the Book of Mormon, if he's the guilty one, if he's the fraud, he had to know every specific word used. And there's 5,800 unique words in the Book of Mormon. 1,800 of those are used only once. Again, the, the percentages go down, 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 regardless of how easy it is to say, oh, yeah, Joseph would have known that. Now, I've got a word now that's a, again, my word is 
I got a lot of words, but humdinger is a good word. This is a humdinger. This is not something you're going to go, oh, I recognize that word. I recognize that definition easily. So I'll give you the word. We'll kind of play it forward and see how it goes. So uh, the word is severally. <laughs> what? Severally. Well, that's an odd word. It sure the heck is, isn't it? Used once in the Book of Mormon. Used once in the Bible. Used once in the Doctrine and Covenants. Severally. Can you spell that? You might get that right. 60% of my people got it right. So, okay, it's not a killer. It's not the end of the world. 18 out of my 30 spelled it as it should. But only 14% got the definition right. And I'm shocked that, the four, that four people actually got it right. It's difficult. Severally. So here's the spelling. I don't know how close you are there, but severally. Hmm, interesting. So what is the deal? Let's go to the context first and the definition second. Okay, so we are in the very end of the Book of Mormon, Moroni 10. In Moroni 10, Moroni is outlining the gifts of the Spirit. Beautiful. There are 10 of them there, and he's listing them down through. When he's done, he has something to say in context that tells us a little more about this gifts, these gifts of the Spirit. He says, and this is verse 17 that we're in. And all these gifts come by the Spirit of Christ. And they come unto every man severally. Ooh, maybe according to his will. Now that's pretty funky, don't you think? They come unto every man. These gifts of the Spirit come unto every man severally. So right now, whether you're an anti, whether you're a beautiful old saint, how would you define that? Well, let's get to the definition. What do we got? So severally, separately, distinctively, apart from others. Okay, again, let's read it and see how that fits in. And all these gifts come by the crew spirit of Christ. And they come unto every man severally. Hmm. Separately, distinctly, apart from others. That is a, what they would call a precise definition. Precise. Once in the Bible, once in Doctrine and Covenants, well, once here in or Moroni 10. Again, at some, and an anti may say, he can sell any word you want to put up there. I don't care. He can spell it. Again, I have bright people. In fact, let me give you one last story. So uh, I was bringing people into my home, giving them the test. I have a neighbor. He's a PhD. He has taught for decades at the university level. <coughs> Excuse me. University level. Came in, sat down. We started. I gave him the first 10 words. You've already seen those if you're following me. Pretty easy. One or two syllables, one definition. The easiest of all is going to come. At 10, he had not got one definition right, and he said, uh, thanks, this really isn't for me. He stood up and he walked out. This is a friend of mine. I'm done with that. And what does that say? It says that these are not easy words. And it laid at Joseph's feet saying, oh, he could have done anything. He had, and so these are some of the responses I've had from antis and from uh, saints who moved on the, out of the church. He had, he had, Tutors, instructors, helpers, advocates. He was studying all the time. He knew all those words. <coughs> I'm thinking, man, how far do you go in the lie you're telling? Joseph didn't know these words. And I'm at 20 of 60 of 120. You're going to go, man, when you get to 120, you're going to go, there is no flipping way Joseph did that. I'm telling you, and you're going to be amazed at the nimbleness of the words in the Book of Mormon I'm going to use and lay at Joseph's feet? And I don't think so. Okay. 20 are done. On to the harder words. Thank you so much.